Okay, uh, can you hear me? Okay, uh, very well. Uh, so, uh, thank you for the introduction. So, uh, so, I'm from Japan, and in the traditional storytelling in Japan, an apprentice would give a casual talk to warm up the audience before the master comes in <laughs> to give the talk. So that's what I'm going to do, so please warm up. So, uh, so this is the 50th anniversary of the discovery of the gravity in string theory, and Michelangelo Mangano reminded us of this wonderful paper by Shark and Schwartz. But I just wanted to also point out that there was also uh, independent work by Tamiyaki Onea that appeared almost simultaneously. And uh, by the way, I am following uh, Juan's example to put these hyperlinks, so, so you, can, you can go to the references. And uh, so Tamiyaki Onea was a, a graduate student in a relatively small university in Hokkaido. And he, so it, he, when I was a graduate student, uh, his work was very much inspiring to me. And in this paper by uh, uh, Shark and Schwartz, they have this sentence that says that our analysis suggests that the dual model might perhaps provide a unified theory of electromagnetism, weak interaction, and gravitations. And in some sense, we are still sort of uh, trying to realize this dream that was en envisioned in this paper. This is also the 40th anniversary of the first superstring revolution. Uh, Michael Green uh, uh, and John Schwartz and Omari cancellation. David just came in, the, uh, discovered the heterotic string construction, and the vacuum configuration of superstring where the name Carabiao first appeared uh, in the scientific literature. Uh, I was a first year graduate student when this happened, and uh, I heard a rumor that something great happened in, at Aspen Center for Physics. And, uh, but in those days, the preprint was shipped on the, on the Pacific, through the Pacific Ocean. So it took three months for me to get the, these papers. So uh, that's very different now. Uh, this is also the 30 minus one anniversary of the second superstring revolution. And of course, uh, we then dropped the bombshell uh, on March uh, 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 String uh, 95 conference. And uh, this was followed by D-Brain, black hole microstate counting, and ADHCFT, and in some sense, we are still sort of continue to explore uh, the result, uh, the, 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 the vision that was displayed by Whitting at that time. So, does every generation need a revolution, new revolution? This is often uh, attributed to Thomas Jefferson, but he's actually, this is a misquote, and uh, he actually wrote that tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriot <laughs> and tyrants. Or are we in the normal science phase where we're setting up stage for the next revolution? Uh, as Hideki Yukao said in his autobiography, uh, people who explore the unknown, people like us, are travelers without map. So we don't know whether we are continue to be in the normal stage or going to be the next revolution. But whatever that is, I think we should ask good questions. That's the important first step. And if we have good questions, uh, that can lead to that may, we may not be able to answer that question, but trying to answer these good question leads us to unexpected discovery and applications. And with that in mind, uh, we have uh, invited uh, uh, people to submit us questions, and we got 100 questions. And, uh, but we wanted to have questions that can be plausibly answered in the next 10 years. And uh, we have uh, these questions, and these are accessible. At the end of our remarks, we'd like to invite you to first comment on these questions so we can have an interesting conversation based on these questions. Uh, we try to actually make these questions clear. So, and sometimes uh, we receive questions and we try to clarify that and we revise the questions. So I hope uh, these are interesting things to look at and then, then I hope uh, we'll have some interesting discussion after our remarks. So I'd like to take this opportunity to make a few comments about uh, some of the questions. And uh, there are lots of interesting questions about the non perturbative Method, she asked, can string theory, field theory, be formulated at a fully non perturbative and quantum level? By the way, again, you can go to the uh, discussion at this link. And uh, for the point of uh, string field theory was first invented, uh, it, was, it looked like a rather awkward uh, and complicated uh, framework to deal with. But for the last 10 years or so, it has been found very useful, and as was uh, demonstrated in Xi's talk, it had many practical applications. And in many cases, uh, it, 
gave rise to the result that are free of artifact of renormalization or regularization and gave some un unambiguous result and sometimes much simpler than traditional method. And uh, I hope that uh, this can this also give us some insight into non perturbative method. And in this context, uh, Ashok Sen pointed out that if we knew how to generate a perturbative expansion around all saddle point and also how the desired integration control is expressed as some of the lift system rules, we have in principle non perturbative definition of the theory. Can this, apply, can this idea be applied to string theory? Uh, in this context, uh, Nikita has a very interesting suggestion about what are the complex saddles that we might consider added summing in string perturbation theory. That, uh, uh, can we use, can, can non-unitary conformal field theory has role to play in this context? So these are very interesting questions, and but we can also consider applying it to simpler setup. So uh, Ricardo Schiappa, who had developed this idea of resurgence for many years, uh, su suggested that uh, it, maybe it's reachable, uh, doing that can be reachable in a simpler context of matrix model minimum and topological string theory. And in this conference, there was actually a beautiful talk by Raghu Mahajan, who developed some of the techniques of how to do the deep brain instant on calculations. And we just heard the beautiful talk by Marcos Marino, uh, which actually gave, us, gave me, at least personally for me, a hope that we could plausibly determine the large, largest behavior of topological string, partition function, and for compact. Carabia manifold, and being compact is important because that means that you have a finite Newton cup, uh, coupling in a non-compact direction, and try, we can t consider matching it to, to the black hole entropy counting, and uh, that can lead to the unique non-perturbative completion of the topological string passion function, and being able to do that can help us gain insight into how to do non-perturbative completion of string theory. But at least within this toy model context, uh, Marcos' talk gave me hope that this is achievable within the next decade, and uh, I haven't worked on this for the last 10 years or so, but it's very much, I'm very much motivated to come back to this question. So thank you. Space of series is also a very interesting subject. That there are lots of questions about this that was proposed. So, so I said that uh, this is the 40th anniversary of the first superstring revolution, but there are other interesting things happens. 40 years ago, the, the Dan Friedan uh, got PhD, and uh, his PhD thesis is very interesting. So in this thesis, uh, he suggested an analogy between the classification of quantum field theory and the classification of Riemannian manifold, and proposed uh, this uh, program of uh, understanding the space of quantum field theory. I was a first year graduate student, and so I said, well, this is like <laughs> uh, the, the wonderful vision, but I have no idea how this can possibly be achieved. But in the last 40 years, we have actually learned quite a bit about uh, how this kind of space of theory, what kind of structure. We uncovered lots of lots of beautiful structure in the space of quantum field theory, supersymmetric quantum field theory, conformal field theory, holographic theory, S matrix, and brains. And there are lots more to be learned in this direction. Uh, Sasha G. Boydov asks, what's the space of holographic conformal field theories? And uh, but he pointed out, well, bootstrap may not be sufficient. And uh, we may need some ingredient. For example, can we uh, exclude a free scalar minimally coupled to general relativity? How do you, how do we do, how do, you do that? Well, so the, here is one possibility of adding constraints. For example, there is a beautiful paper by Asmut Foxted a couple of years ago, where he actually excluded uh, some of uh, low energy theory in ADS with certain scalar potential using Penrose inequality. This is, uh, mo uh, this is derived by Engelhardt and Horowitz based on ADS-CFT correspondence. So this is like a clear example where excluding certain low energy theory is possible in this, in this way. Grant Remen asks a corresponding question about S matrix. Uh, can we prove that string theory is the only consistent perturbative uh, uh, ultraviolet completion of gravity? And uh, there was a very interesting talk, uh, in related talk by Andrea Guerrieri. Uh, at
Okay, so let me try this one. Maybe I spoke too loud. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so I actually wanted to also attract attention to the question about discrete family of conformal history. For conformal history, if you have continuous family, yeah, well, we still have a lot of things to, to, lot to learn about conformal field theory in continuous family, but we have learned quite a bit of structure of conformal field theory and conformal manifold. But there are lots of interesting questions about the discrete family. Is there, for example, in the context of ADS-CFT, especially to take the large end limit or first space limit, we'd like to understand how conformal field theory are distributed as a function of central charge, for example. So one way to con uh, introduce the structure, understand structure of this discrete family maybe to introduce the notion of distance between this joint conformal field theory. And uh, there have been some attempts, but uh, defining distance in a way that satisfies the axiom of distance has been challenging, and I think this is an interesting direction. Classification of brains is very also very interesting, and uh, the, the Swampland Cobaldism conjecture gave us new motivation to explore new types of brains, and we just had a very interesting talk by Kazuya Yonekura about non-supersymmetric brain construction. So there are lots of lots of new things that uh, we can consider learning, we can try to learn in the next 10 years. There, there seems to be lots of good questions in this area. Swamp plant. <laughs> that uh, there seems to be non-trivial constraint on effective theory of gravitational systems. There was a beautiful uh, uh, we're a balanced talk by uh, uh, Miguel, uh, Miguel Montero uh, on the first day of the conference. The gravity is very different, and uh, many people said that. For example, Cindy Kira asked, can we develop a mathematically precise measure as to when effective field theory will break down in the context of qu uh, uh, quantum gravity? And uh, many questions are about how to quantify the prediction of swamp land, can we prove or falsify swampland bound? So Miguel asked a question about uh, global symmetry, and the same question was asked by uh, Julio Paramartinez. And uh, in this context, the question is that, uh, well, can we uh, estimate how global symmetry can be broken uh, in uh, quantum gravity? And these are important questions, for example, if we want to tell experimenter when, when the pro how, how, how long the proton can live, these are important. And uh, Irene asks a corresponding question about the distance conjecture. Okay, so I take my pre uh, one, one, one slide uh, uh, as a speaker uh, to advertise my recent work with Yifan Wang, <laughs> <laughs> where uh, we actually achieved some of this quantification that, uh, that in the distance conjecture, uh, we expect that, uh, so in this case, delta is a mass, but it decays exponentially in the distance. But in this particular work, context of 2D CFT or ADS3, we are able to give both up and lower bound on this coefficient, which translates into the lower bound by Planck scale. So in the original ADS, the original distance conjecture of me and Kamran, we said that alpha is about the order of Planck mass, Planck scale, but we didn't give any, any numerical value associated to it. But in this work, we are able to actually give precise numerical bound. Uh, on this case, and I hope uh, there is an opportunity to develop this to higher dimension also, and maybe even in flat space, so that would be very exciting. Digital space. So despite some of my, former, uh, my previous publications, I still remain agnostic about whether string theory allows a semi-stable semi solution with a positive cosmological constant and with all the moduli fixed, and uh, I hope we'll hear a definite answer to this question in the next 10 years. Uh, I'd be very happy uh, if construction is done, and, uh, or I would be equally happy uh, if it was proven that it's not possible. I would like to know. And uh, there was actually a beautiful uh, presentation and uh, impressive work by Jacob Moritz presented at this conference. Uh, until recently, there was no single Calabiao construction which combines all the necessary ingredients of KKLT construction. But he was able to achieve that, and that's a wonderful uh, uh, thing. Uh, we st there are still challenges, like how to control alpha prime corrections or large to hoof coupling. But uh, uh, I think it's important to settle the question of whether KKLT construction can be realized in string theory. And the talk by Jacob gave me hope that this is achievable in the next 10 years. 
And Yaakov himself asked uh, this very interesting question uh, that, that uh, the, the success, if you succeed in making such construction, you can ask lots of interesting questions, like can you explain Dojita entropy, or can you, uh, 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 can you, what, can, can it, does it give you uh, 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 macroscopic interpretation of digital entropy. In the first formulation of uh, Yaakov's question, he didn't have this word such as KKLT. I guess he's too modest. So I didn't quite understand what uh, uh, microscopic construction of digital cosmology means, so I asked him co for clarification, and he kindly agreed to insert this word such as KKLT, so now I understand what he meant. I have one more wish. And this is very personal to me, which is proposed by Greg Moore. Uh, is there a conceptual explanation of mushroom moonshine, including uh, 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 genus zero phenomena? It must, can, can, can we understand mushroom moonshine? Well, uh, Greg said that good people have tried hard for the last 14 years, and we are still waiting for the aha moment. So if the answer is yes, probably a new idea is required. I think this 14 years refers to my paper with Toru Eguchi and Yuji Tachikawa, but I would like to point out that this paper was trying to interpret my PhD thesis, which was 35 years ago, that there I, I calculated the expansion of elliptic genus in terms of mock theta function and found a bunch of integers, and it took us 21 years to understand that these are dimensions of uh, Mashu group M24. So I do hope that in the next 10 years, there will be another aha moment where we are finally understand what this machine moonshine means. And there are many more interesting questions and helpful hint. And I hope we'll have a very interesting comment from the audience about some of these, uh, 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 these uh, questions. Uh, so this is the 50th anniversary of the uh, uh, discovery of the gravity uh, in string theory, so I asked John Schwartz, my colleague at Caltech, what, how you, he feel about it. And he said that I'm pleased that after uh, 50 years later, it is still plausible that string theory can provide a realistic quantum theory of gravity and other forces, which goes back to the sentence that I quoted uh, in the first slide. And in fact, uh, for the last uh, 50 years or so, uh, string theory has uh, made remarkable achievements already that it is a consistent quantum theory of gravity, and there is no other game in town. And being so, it provides a basis for theoretical speculation about gravity. So there are, of course, nowadays many works which does not directly refer to string theory, but string theory gives a theoretical basis of so, those speculations. Otherwise, uh, we might be considering discussing some empty set. So this, uh, this is a very important. And it contains all the ingredients to construct the standard model of particle physics. And it contains a promising candidate for the dark matter and may be able to explain the dark energy and provide guidance for future experiment and observation as alternative to naturalness and provide a new insight and a powerful tool for studying quantum field theory and also inspire progress in mathematics. So I think we're going to have a wonderful 10 years from now and I'm very much looking forward to I wanted to thank the organizer at the beginning of the presentation, but David just walked out. So I'd like to first thank the organizer, but I would also like to thank David for ensuring that this wonderful series of conference continues. So thank you very much. I propose we postpone comments and questions uh, until after the next press